Hi everyone, Marguerite here. For a while I've wanted to make some videos for the person who is just starting with collage art. And there's so many great things about collage art, but the, one of the things that can be so frustrating is that the concept of taking papers and using a glue stick and gluing those papers onto something else, it's a really easy concept and yet it's really easy to get stuck with that. And recently I received a question from somebody who said that when she begins on a journal, she, she goes blank when she has the, the, the page in front of her and that she is also uh, indecisive about what to do. And she's pretty good about doing backgrounds, but then when it comes to using papers to collage that she just um, doesn't really know how to go forward. So I wanted to turn on my camera and show you my desk and go just, just do some collaging, uh, simple collages uh, in a notebook, just to kind of give you Mm, an example of, of how I approach things and in hopes that that will help you as well. One thing I wanted to mention was that a lot of people start with collage art when they have something in mind that they want to do. If they have a really nice journal that they really want to fill the pages with or some really special papers that they want to use. So the stakes go up, right? When you are putting pressure on yourself to create something beautiful in your beautiful notebook or you know something beautiful out of those gorgeous papers that you've got you you start to really get um, a little anxious or you can get anxious and it might be a good idea to start with a project that has the papers have less importance to you therefore you can feel like you're a little bit more free to make mistakes and to experiment, especially if you're just starting out. So let me go over to my desk and uh, show you what I'm talking about. Like many people who come to collage art, uh, my love of collage art grew to, from making junk journals and then wanting to fill those pages with really beautiful art, with collage art that would enhance the whole junk journal um, project. And filling those pages sometimes could be stressful um, just to get it right, the correct, to match the correct mood of the, of the journal and that sort of thing. And I knew that I needed to do something different because I was not enjoying the process of collaging. It was just too stressful. So a big breakthrough for me was to just turn away from or move away from collaging in a valuable journal and to instead pick up a journal that had no emotional value at all and to work in that. And I did something, I, I, I bought something like this, a very inexpensive dollar journal from Target in the, in those uh, bargain bins. And this was awesome because I just didn't, I just relaxed and I told myself, you know what, I, I don't care if I make mistakes. I'm just going to do, just have fun in this book and it's not for anything that I'm going to be showing anybody or, or anything of that sort. And here's what I came up with. I, I filled it up a lot. I tore out a lot of pages uh, when I first opened it because I knew that it was going to get really big and bulky and it did. So tearing out some of the pages helped. Even so, I think I tore out at least half. Even so, it's it it also got uh, big once again. But that's okay, right? Never mind. And inside, I I kept it very simple. I used things like leftover pattern paper. Um, and then pieces that I cut out of magazines. Here's another piece of pattern paper. And then I just did some rubber stamping and I had left, I left white space, right? I mean, this is, these are just tags and receipts from, from everyday stuff. 
Here's another piece of pattern paper over here. A piece of pattern paper punched out in a circle. Right? So these types of journals are really a really good way to, to have fun and also to, to get experience and become more confident in your collaging. This one, for example, is there's a piece of calendar. This is something, again, I pulled out of a brochure or a, uh, an, order, an order catalog, I think. Some receipts and then washi tape that kind of matched. I had some red over here, so I used red and red washi tapes and another piece of red sticker there. And then some rubber stamping, right? And here's more pattern paper behind over here. So this, this, some of these pages can get a little complicated because I'm just adding more stuff on top of each other. But if you, if you want to practice and you want to be successful at creating pages that you like, that's the most important thing is, is, to, is to be happy with what you're creating, then I would recommend that you start with a notebook that as I said, has very little emotional value to you. And that you use, start with three pieces. Start with three pieces, okay? And I'm gonna show you how, how I do this. So I have this notebook. It's a very simple notebook and I've started to tear out pages and also to reinforce with a little bit of washi tape down the middle. And this notebook, I'm just going to, I have no intentions for it. I'm just gonna be gluing stuff in it and um, just having fun with it, right? So I have some rubber stamps for backgrounds. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of these let me start first with a piece of washi tape down the middle, just because I said I want to reinforce. I tore out quite a few pages, so let me just do this really fast here. This notebook is almost like the size of a passport. It's a little bit bigger. I don't have a ruler or else I would tell you how, what's, the, what's the measurements, but... Um, it's, a little, it's smaller definitely than a postcard. All right, so I'm gonna take some blue ink and I'm gonna just do some backgrounds. Now, it's up to you if you wanna put, if you wanna do you know, some stamping for a background, you can leave, the, leave it blank, that's fine as well. So I'm going to try and use three pieces of paper on this side and three pieces on this side. Now it's up to you if you want to just do to focus on one page and just complete one or to also do keep in mind that this is, you know, on a facing page like on a spread and to work on this one simultaneously while you're working on this one. That's what I'm going to do, but it's up to you how you want to approach it, okay? So I have this ring full of scraps, and I got this from a um, person on Etsy. And I checked, and she's not, she's not selling these anymore, but I love this idea because it just gives you random pieces of papers, but... If you have your own stash of papers, then it's the same concept. It's just looking through a bunch of different things, right? So here's um, dictionary page. I love dictionary page, so I'm gonna take a piece of this. Maybe I will do also a piece of sheet music. And there's lots of text. Not too many images. 
Well, I'll just start with those two. In addition to that, I have this pattern paper block. It's really some pretty papers in it. I you know, have some pieces, things like that. So let me take this one. Okay. So if I tear a piece off, I can put one on one page and put another one on another page. These are kind of big though, so let's make that smaller. Okay. Now. Just getting rid of the the, the part where they had where it was the um the circle punch. Okay, so now I've got two pieces here and two pieces here. So I was saying three. Let's try and have three. So you could do something small like a postage stamp or let's see what else I've got. Here I'm just looking, I've got my bin. This is my bin here just with papers in it. So I'm just looking through. I like these numbers. Numbers are always good. But then I've got something like an image. That's also nice. But I don't want to tear this image in half and share it. That's not what I want to do. So let me see if there's something else that I can do. Also, I'm kind of missing I'm kind of missing some color. I mean, I've got these bright pieces. So let me see if there's something else that I can do with color. I've got these pieces of map. This would work. Possibly. Let's see what else I've got. I've got a big flower. Mm, that's possible as well. And then also I want to check one more time. Let me make sure if there's any other pattern paper that would work better in here rather than that pink. Here's my bag of scraps of pattern paper. Let me see. I'm also seeing black. That's interesting. I wish I had more of this. Where did I get that from? I don't. That's the only piece I have of that. And it's too big. If I tear it in half, yeah, I like it. I'm not going to tear it though, I'll cut it. And this side. Maybe I'm going to switch it, try it this way. There we go. Okay. 
three pieces. Do you see what I, what I did there? So I will go down and I will glue this and I will be right back. Okay, so here's where I am. I've glued everything down and I have my three pieces and now it's time for me to think about adding more embellishments if I want to. I could stop right here and be done and move to the next page if I want to. That's, that's entirely fine. I'm totally happy with the way it is right now. However, it's, it's more fun to think about, you know, adding more stuff. So I have um, some things that I could use. I have some stickers. These are stickers of postage stamps. And I also have very small rubber stamps I could do. You know, I could put something here and something over here or something on the music sheet. Um, you know, or I could take scraps. I have a bunch of, you know, little things. If this black is too stark and you wanted to kind of, you know, break that up, you could do something like that or over here, something here, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's tons of possibilities. So here, I'm just gonna use these stickers. They're not my favorite, but what I do really like about them is that they're really vibrant, super bright. So because again, I've got this kind of stark black um, it's kind of fun to to add some color so I think that's what I'm gonna do so maybe I'll put this one here and this green now how I put them down is I, I'm looking for an intersection I've got an intersection right here right where this paper and this paper meet right there. I have another intersection right here and one over here. So I could put it right there, but I really want to break up this black. So I'm going to put it here. And I do have this empty space. So I will put some kind of rubber stamping there. This guy or I have a postmark, rounded postmark stamp I could do. Oh, I'll just go with this guy. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna choose red because I've got a tiny, tiny bit of red on the map. So let me do that. Test it out. Yep, good. Nice. And maybe one here as well. There, that's it. Now I am done with this collage. Nothing else I want to do. So turning to the next page, here I will go ahead and just put some more washi tape down on the spine or on the crease of these two pages, just so that I'm ready for the next time. So I'm ready for my next my next pages. I can continue on or I can stop for today. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to, to answer your questions and to give any suggestions that I have that I know that will make your collaging experience better. Thanks for watching. Bye.